The next big definition we're going to look at is concavity, so the, the shape of our graph. And how we're going to introduce this idea is by looking at the, the slope of our curve, and more specifically, what happens when that slope changes. So in this first graph here, we have, we have a curve, and then we've graphed a few different tangent lines along the curve. And what we're noticing is as we, as we read this graph from left to right, what's happening are, is that the, the slope is increasing. So the slope of these tangent lines is increasing as we move from left to right. So over here, for instance, at this tangent line, this, this left one, is kind of a small positive slope. So it's pointed up. You know, it's pointed up, but it's, it's kind of flatter. And then this one further to the right, so we're reading from left to right, this one further to the right is still pointing up, but it's much steeper. So it's a large positive slope. And so uh, kind of a side effect of this is that in each of these cases, what's happening when our slope is increasing from left to right, what happens is that our graph in each of these, for each of these places here, our graph is above the tangent line. So you can, you can kind of see if we were to zoom in on this tangent line right here, notice that our curve right around that point of tangency, our curve is above the, the tangent line. Same thing with this other one. We have our tangent line, we have our point of tangency, and then it looks to be that our curve is sitting slightly above the tangent line. Now something similar is happening in this other graph. But what's happening here is the slope is actually decreasing. So as we read, again, we're reading this graph from left to right. We have our curve. We've graphed a few different tangent lines. And what's happening is these tangent lines are, the, the slope of those tangent lines is decreasing as we read from left to right. So this kind of this leftmost one that we have pictured here, it's the tangent lines pointed down, but it's kind of flat. So it's like a small negative number. So it's a small negative slope here. And then if we look at this other tangent line further to the right, what's happening? Well, it's pointing down, so it's negative, but it's much steeper. So this is a large negative slope. And so as we read this graph from left to right, what we're seeing is that the, the slope is decreasing. The slope is getting more and more negative as we read from left to right. And kind of a, a side effect of this is that the graph, our actual curve, lies below the tangent line near each of those points of tangency. So if we were to zoom in, say, on this point of tangency right here, there's our tangent line. What we're seeing is that the curve right around that point, our curve is below the tangent line. Same thing. Same thing for the other point. Here we go. And we have our point of tangency. It looks like right about there. And we see our tangent line. And then our curve is actually below the tangent line, right around that point. OK. So there's, there's other examples of this. Um, for a slope that's increasing from left to right, it could also look something like this. So this is also an example of a curve where the slope is increasing from left to right. And just to convince you, if we were to draw in, say, a tangent line here and a tangent line over here, kind of like what we had, kind of like what we had above. Nope. Let's 
try this again. Do one right here, and then one right here. There we go. Um, so we have our we have our curve. We have our two little tangent lines here, just to just to illustrate two different points along the curve here. One further to the left, one further to the right. And what's happening on this one further to the left is it's pointing down. So and it's relatively steep. So it's a large negative slope. And then this one further to the right is it's still pointing down, but now it's it's a little bit flatter. It's it's not as steep. So it's a smaller negative slope over here. So the slope is actually increased. We went from being large negative on the left and as we read further to the right, the slope of our curve has become smaller negative. So the slope is actually increased. And in in these cases, you can see when we when we actually draw the tangent line and our curve, uh, the curve is sitting above the tangent line, both of these places. And something similar over here. So how might this look? Well, it might look something like this. So, you know, draw a tangent line a little to the left, just to illustrate, and then a little another tangent line further to the right. And you can see we have a large positive slope here, a smaller negative, a smaller positive slope here. So we went from large positive to small positive, the slope is decreased. And what's happening is we have our tangent line and the actual curve is below the tangent line. All right, so just some kind of conceptual idea of what's happening here when we talk about tangent lines and the slope of our curve as we, we as we read from left to right. Now, what is what does this mean for the shape of our graph? Well, we we give this behavior a special name and we call it the concavity. So we say that at x equals a function f is said to be concave up if the graph of the function lies above the tangent line at x equals a. So when we, when we plot our tangent line at x equals a, if the curve kind of bends above the tangent line, it's concave up. Now, if we say our graph is concave down at x equals a, if the graph of our function lies below the tangent line, at x equals a. So we're defining concavity here, concave up and concave down. And what really this has to do with is kind of the shape of the graph, how the graph bends. All right, so what do, what do we mean? Well, there's there's kind of, yeah, there's a few options for what a concave up graph could look like. It could look like, kind of like a U shape, um, or it could look like part of that U shape. So it might look like the, the left part, or it might look like the right part there. So this is generally what a concave concave up graph looks like. And way to remember it is um, it's concave up like a cup. So you could kind of picture, you know, it would hold water in there. Um, and then concave down, what would concave down look like? Well, it looks like an upside down U. So it looks look something, you know, so the shape of our graph, if it's concave down, would look something like this or maybe just part of that, so one half or, or the other half. So the way to kind of remember concave down, eh, concave down like a, like a frown. So concave up like a cup, concave down like a frown. And we're, what we're really doing here is describing the shape of the graph or really how the graph of our function actually bends. And so there's, for concave up, when we talk about a function, we're going to be we're going to be interested in knowing where the function's increasing, where it's decreasing, and we're also going to be interested in knowing when it's concave up and concave down. And so if we have a function that's increasing,
gen we think of our tangent line as almost describing the, the general trend of our function. So if we have a function that's increasing, um, it's, it's moving up. The general trend of our function is moving up like that. And what concavity does is it describes how our function actually bends. So there's, there's two options. So if we have an increasing function and there's going to be some shape to the graph, it can either bend upward, so concave up, or it can bend, bend downward. It can bend below the tangent line, and we call that concave down. Um, so for f decreasing, if we have a decreasing function, decreasing describes just the general trend of our function. So it's going down, it's decreasing, it's getting lower. And what concavity does is it describes, well, how does the function, how does the graph bend? Does it bend up or does it bend down? So if it bends above the tangent line, like this, well, it's up. It's above the tangent line, so concave up. And if it goes below the tangent line, well, then it's, it's bending concave down. So it has a concave down shape. So f increasing, think of it like the slope of just the, the graph. Think of the slope of the tangent line. It describes just the general trend of our function. It's going up, or if it's decreasing, it's going down. Concavity puts a little bit more shape to it, puts, describes how the actual graph bends. If it bends upward, then it's concave up. If it bends downward, then it's concave down. Same thing with decreasing. Decreasing, you know, here's the general trend of our function. But if it bends downward, then it's concave down. And if it bends upward, then it's concave up. All right, so it's going to be important to kind of keep these different pictures in mind, just so we can describe and sketch the graph of a function. And so with concavity, you know, we're going to be interested in where our graph is concave up, where it's concave down. But we're also going to be interested in the places where it, that changes, where it changes shape. And we call these particular points, we give them a special name, we call them inflection points. So the definition, an inflection point is a point on the graph where the function is continuous and it changes from either concave up to concave down or the opposite. So it goes from concave down to concave up. So it changes concavity. Um, so in, in we have a few different examples here. And in each of these, we've graphed you know, what, what are different looks for an inflection point. So in this first one, what we have here is this section of our graph over here is concave up. This section of our graph over here is concave down. And then somewhere in the middle, it must switch. It must actually switch shape. So over here, we're concave up. Over here, we're concave down. And where we switch, that's our inflection point. And notice that for that inflection point, um, one side of the inflection point, the curve is above the tangent line. And on the other side, it switches to, to being below. So we've switched concavity. Now over here, we're seeing another option, uh, what an inflection point might look like. So here on this left side, we're concave down. On the right side, we're concave up. So we have that concave up shape. And then right at this point, where, that's where we switch where we're switching shape. So we call that special place an inflection point. And then same thing over on this one. So we're concave down over here, we're concave up over here, and then right in the middle where we actually make that change. So there's, there's an actual specific point along our curve where we actually change shape. So we go from concave down over here to concave up. We call that special point. It's another inflection point. So notice an inflection point can happen when our slope is positive. It can happen when our slope, the, the tangent line is flat, or it can happen when our tangent line, uh, the slope is negative. So we can have change in concavity um, 
at any of those different places. And so this will be an important definition uh, for when we talk about concavity. And just the one little thing here about continuity is we don't want our graph, and most of the functions we're going to be looking at are, are going to be continuous on intervals. So when we talk about an inflection point, we just want to make sure our function is continuous there. So there's no jump or break or hole in the graph. So notice in these examples, we could we could trace over at this at this inflection point. There's no jump or break or hole in our graph there. It's just a nice we can draw right through it without ever taking our pen off the page. All right, so those are the two, um, well, three kind of main definitions here for when we talk about the shape of a graph: concave up, concave down, and then where where if it does where the change actually happens, and we call those inflection points. All right, so let's um, we're gonna see kind of how to kind of next we're going to see an example of how to put all these definitions together so given the graph of a function just identifying all this different behavior